and it worked on the first time. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Sandcast. We got Triborns back in the house, second episode we've had in our new studio with our brand new mics. How do we sound? And uh, I've played the long con on this one for a long time, been trying to get Ken Steffes on for the longest time, and then I had this idea that if I just had him write a book with me, I'd trick him into coming on the podcast. Got him. Always got suckered. <laughs> suckered <laughs> happens with every 10 so years. So he just casted it out and reeled him in, yes. and now we have Kent Steffes, by far the most requested guest on the podcast. because nobody knew if he was actually a real person. Right? We thought it was just a legend, like a dragon or something, you know? The ghost of Kiev. Yes, <laughs> coming in. Kit, it's awesome to have you on. Thank it's you guys for having me. great getting to hang out with you the last... You, I don't know how long we've been kind of chatting about the book. Probably about a year or so. Uh-huh. It's yeah. been great. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. <laughs> well, thank you. It's been fun, too. <laughs> I, I, best, another thing I've done in my life, I'm a published author now. You Thanks are a published to Trav. Yeah, he did that to me, too. <laughs> did he? Do that? Yeah. <laughs> Kid's book. There That's more go. on my <laughs> level. But, <laughs> yeah. but hey, don't trust this guy, anybody out there. If he asks you about a book, tell him no. <laughs> uh, That's how I got to try to do a podcast with me. I'm like, hey, if you do this, we'll get a book together. Can't but it is true, things. like, I think we, and we talked about it, you talked about it in that article you wrote on Volley Mag, Volleyball Mag was that, you know, I get hit up like 15 yeah. times a year on stuff. You know, I got a book, I got a Netflix series, I got a documentary, mm-hmm. and you're like, yeah, whatever. Like, you're mm-hmm. never going to do a Netflix series or a documentary, so yeah. I'd always say like, hey, call me last, you know, hit my, I'm your last mm-hmm. interview, just don't want to be impolite, but I know it's going nowhere. And sure enough, my man Trav sends the book to me. Uh-huh. It was unbelievable. <laughs> right. Like the first guy in 20 years to actually complete something. It's a, it was, and it was a great book, remember? I, I, and, yeah. I, and I read the thing and like that, and I thought, this was awesome. And I read it again the second day. So two days in a row, I read yeah. it twice, and I just loved it. Got on the phone with him, right? We chatted, yep. and you, it took me back. It took me back to the glory days of mm. beach volleyball, yeah. 1990s, United States. Wow, was you, you guys ruined it for all of us. Because if we didn't know about that, we'd be happy about where we're at right now. <laughs> yeah, right, like, yeah, everyone comes in. I could make it like the '90s, and you're like, "Please do." You know? <laughs> but I guess it's big. You know, it's bigger now. It is bigger now than it was. Not in the United States, clearly. But I think, well, first of all, the Olympics is just so huge yeah. compared. Like, uh, all right, so we did. We were doing about four and a half million in prize money in the U.S. Single gender. We were doing six hundred thousand fans. We were getting about four million people watching every week on NBC. Probably a couple million on yeah. the prime ticket, which became Fox, which is now Bally's. Mm-hmm. So, but, you know, I played in this little tournament called the Olympics and like a billion people watched us. Right. So, yeah, that <laughs> does that for you. Game changer. That's <laughs> yeah, a big one, right? Yeah. And so they sold, you know, tens of thousands of tickets and like the Olympics is just so much larger than anything you can play in. And, and actually, even after, uh, and we talk about it in our book, Kings of Summer. Can you see it? Yeah, we yeah, got it right got there. It right there. So buy the book. Um, Travis needs the money because beach volleyball. Is, uh, <laughs> it's, a <homeless> <laughs> it's a homeless person. It's a homeless. We talk. It's a homeless person sport. You just roll out of your tent. You got your shorts on. <laughs> take a shower in the water. Go play some volleyball. It's the per- it's the perfect thing. And the fans too. Just show up. You don't even have to pay anything. Yeah, exactly. it is the homeless person sport. <laughs> Which is always like, but, uh, oh, my God, I lost my train of thought. So the Olympics. Olympics. Oh, oh, so after the, the, the FIVB took it over, mm. and they ran a, they ran an awesome tour for a while. They had about $4 million in prize money, too. When I first came out, it was really great. Yeah. What well, year was that? 50, I first came out 2013. Yeah, 13 or 14, and it was the Grand Slam Opens. I mean, for, for us, it was great. 57 grand to win it. Yeah, ninth yeah. place. Yeah. You're still coming home with splitting eleven grand. Like that's a good. Yeah, it was, it was even bigger in the 2000s when right, they started. Yeah, I'm sure. So I think they're yeah they got to about four million in prize money for their total tour, um, just for one gender. Yeah, yeah the, Dr. Ruben Acosta. Where are you? Is he still alive? He was <laughs> he was a master. He was uh, awesome. No, he made 80, he made eighty million himself. So well, uh, yeah, well, you know, good got, for got him. To get paid. He's got to eighty, wow. 80 million. Big number. Someone did well in the sport. <laughs> <I> think so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Leonard Armado too. He's got a big house here on the Strand. Oh yeah, right next to the pier. He did well in the sport too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Us athletes we just take the dribble. Yeah. But you guys got to find the guys like that. You know, they get rich, you take the scraps. Yeah. It all works out. Well, when the scraps are a lot bigger than what you have now, and you got to take it, right? But what's going on? You tell me. I wrote, I wrote a Facebook post. Your Facebook post. I asked, do you guys want to play in front of people? Yeah. <laughs> you, guys, like, uh, you see the stands, and they're not, you can't actually have any more than 200 people there. Right. Yeah. Is the, that the plan? The, flo- <laughs> the, the Florida stands, I was like, Let's let's pan the camera down a little. <laughs> oh, we all know. We could see when it goes yeah, this way. There's nobody. Yeah. Like the World Championships in Rome, I guess, streaming. 
uh, oh. maybe it's a new word. Am I old? Am I an Beautiful old man? stadium, but... Get off my lawn. We were bigger then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my was God. It, no, it was, was it, like, crazy hot in Rome? Or, like... Uh, it was hot. No, not crazy hot. Because I could see why fans might not have wanted to come out in Fort Lauderdale or Austin. Because Fort Lauderdale was freaking hot. Fort Lauderdale hot. was really hot. No, Rome was uncomfortable. Like, you're not... Maybe 90. Yeah. It's not, like, crazy, I guess. Um, but it was not a good showing. Like, yeah. <laughs> I had been to two previous world championships where five times as much hype oh, well, and Hamburg fans. Was and Hamburg was amazing. We were driving to our bronze medal match and like we're driving past the line to get to the stadium for like two or three minutes. Yeah. Like people were just, it was, it was packed. 13,000. I mean, that's amazing for that's, us these, yeah. these days. And uh, Rome was like, I was like, I'm pretty sure we're like already in the quarterfinals. Like, when did the <laughs> fans come out here? Yeah. No sponsors on the signs. I was like, this is like eerie. The volleyball world, getting it done. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> FIVB. <we're, laughs> but, oh, it's, it's uh, you know, we played the world champ. First of all, there's probably more people in 1976 at the first world championships. Yeah. David Wilkes Beach. selling t shirts, baby. You know, he just hit me up today. He's like, where's my book? So I got to send him a book. Oh, we do have to send him Yeah, one. I got to send him. I'll, I'll get that done. <laughs> Uh, but uh, like we played in the World Championships, and it was Rio, all right? And it was February, and it was the week before Carnival, and it was packed. It was huge. Giant, giant stadium with, like, thousands of people standing outside who are never going to get in because no one's leaving. Yeah. And it was the whole week. And it was really good because, like, in North America and, say, maybe Europe, it's kind of cold in February, yeah. right? It's like that was the time back when that Sports Illustrated had their swimsuit at issue. Yeah. Right? That was a big thing. So th- I don't know why they went away from that. Like, I don't know why it was, and it was big on TV. It was big there. It was money, and then they decided to move it all around. Like, just go back to Rio every year. Yeah, no, I, I think that all the time. I mean, with our California events, even like yeah. this is where the fans are. Let's just no, we want to establish a a fan base in Atlanta. Granted, Atlanta was fun and all, but but like all our fans are here. Like they want to watch us play. Let's just let's just do it here. Does that yeah. not make sense? And that's what on your uh, on your Facebook post when I was going down the the comment section. One of the biggest arguments was that people were saying, "Well, if we just build bigger stadiums, like people will come." Kind of the field mm. of dreams argument. But then you look at Rome, you look at Austin, you know, New Orleans. You know, the bleachers were like high school field hockey bleachers, and there was like ten people there. It's like, well, clearly people aren't going to come <laughs> if you build stuff. But Hermosa, like, you could have built a big stadium and it would have filled up. So I just I was just like, why don't we just run it back the California Pro Beach Tour? That's not a bad and idea. Just walk it up the coast, starting from San Diego and all the way up to Santa Cruz. Hundred percent. Well, it's funny because like, first Sinjin really grew the tour. Let's just be quick about it. Mm-hmm. In the eighties, and he he wanted a bigger tour, and you know he kind of passed it off to me. And I was the number one player. I was on the board of directors, knew everybody, sponsors everybody. I did a lot of the promotions. You know, Karch at the time had, was having had young kids, so he was kind of doing that at the time. And he was big time and already won gold medals and all that. So we literally took the tour. Then, then when the AVP and the FIVB got in their fight, Sinjin went again with Ruben Acosta and built a huge tour on the FIVB tour. It's, yeah. it's not difficult. It's not, a, it's not a tough thing to do. And if you look at sort of both the tours, they're probably doing, like, almost everything wrong. Like, everything we didn't do, they're doing, and nothing we did are they doing, and the results are bizarre. Right. You know, so, yeah, I wrote the plan. Here's the business plan right here, everybody. Oh, my God. <laughs> on the page. I'm, I went to Stanford. <laughs> I'm an like MBA gold. from Stanford. Is, <laughs> I used to side out, hit a cut shot from the right. Now I do business plans. I heard more about the high line. <laughs> Everyone talks no, that's about back. you got to get back to the line. Uh, yeah, you got to go. So you're driving them in. Apparently, you're supposed wait, to not Wait, don't tell everybody. Right. Just, tell me, just tell me this. <laughs> the right side. Go right to left. Everybody, the, the, Alex told me all coaches tell, tell everybody to go in straight. I'm like, what's up with that? So he's, he's so telling me like I'm wrong. In that angle. He was telling me I'm wrong by going right mm-hmm. to left. Mm. Even though I'm the winningest player of all time, but forget about that. <laughs> and then so you're driving, and then you go right back to the line every time. They're just it's it's. I had two shots. I actually noticed I had that an angle shot and a line shot. I had two shots. And where do you supposed to hit it? Where they're not. That's right. Hey. If you want to win beach volleyball tournaments, hit it where they're not. It's a simple game. <laughs> Make a t-shirt win every time. Here's the business plan. Yeah, wait, what is this? It's three pages, and that's how you used to do a beach volleyball tour. So who right do there. we give this to? That's the, that's the, that's the <laughs> question. Want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> that, so we did it in the 90s. Sinjin did it in the 80s. Sinjin and Ruben did it again on the FIVB. So I do want to dig into to some of the specifics because you mentioned everything that you guys were doing in the 80s and 90s, now we're not doing. Yes. And everything that we weren't doing, they're doing. 
What are some of the things that you guys were doing in the 80s and 90s that is absent today? First of all, you got to have a beach volleyball tournament. That always helps. Because if you want people to watch beach volleyball, you actually have to have a tournament. Yeah. And they don't have beach volleyball tournaments. They have exhibitions. So if you look at sports, again, one of the problems is, is everybody watches sports. So everyone thinks they know sports or knows the business of sports. But you got to study it. And you got to learn it. And you got to know business. And you got to know sports. Mm-hmm. So what you see is if you have a preseason game or an exhibition, you have far less fans than if you have an actual athletic contest. Mm-hmm. Right? So, you know, even in, say, the, even in sport, large sports, games that aren't the championships or the good ones, less people watch. So if you have a sport like beach volleyball, which is not that, it's, it's, it's not a very large sport. And there's reasons for that. There's technical reasons for that. It's uh, complexity narrative and communication. So you have to make sure that you get the largest audience you can. All right. And you do that by having an actual beach volleyball tournament. And the, ready? Here, here's the, here it is, guys. You collect the world's best beach volleyball players, all of them, and you have them play. <laughs> and guess what? Anybody can play, and anybody can show up who wants to participate. That's how it works. Name me a sport, one sport, and we'll get into, into sports roulette, and this yeah. is not sports roulette, because you can't just pick <laughs> a sport, the one you like, say we should be like this. you got to go across those sports. <laughs> Name me a sport where I can't right now walk in and go win the championship if I'm good enough. It doesn't exist except in Beach Volleyball, with the Elite 16 coming to you next, where? Paris? No. Paris. Hamburg this weekend. Well, Hamburg this weekend, Paris in a couple weeks. About a month. Right? Yeah. So that's the first thing. They have restricted tournaments. They don't have an athletic contest. They don't have a Beach Volleyball tournament. And that's important. It's important on a psychological level. So we talked about complexity, narrative, and communication. Sports that are more complex have larger followings. Mm -hmm. You know, football is a very complex sport. Offense, defense, special teams. You got 11 guys on each side, plus a kicker, plus a field goal guy, plus a holder, plus a long snapper. You can run, you can throw. You know, the offense, you got a center, you got a lineman, you got wide receivers, you got a quarterback, you got a fullback, you got a running back. That's a lot. You got, on Beach Hall, we got right and left side guy. Right. You got, ready? Just hit the ball. Blocker, <laughs> defense. that hit. <laughs> if you look at it from another direction, um, the javelin throw is a very non-complex sport. Mm-hmm. Guy runs with a stick, throws it. Well, you know, you find that sports that are less complex have less following. So you have to do things in sports that are, have low complexity in order to generate the, the maximum crowd that you can. Like tennis, right, would be one person hitting a ball back and forth. Less complex, right? Uh, it's less complex, but in that case, they have an incredibly large um, um, equipment mm. industry surrounding them. So they have rackets, right. shoes... And this, and they do it right. They have the ready. They bring the entire world's the best yeah. tennis players right. to certain spots, right. and they feature them. They have they have majors, okay. So they focus on four. Uh, if you take the top four tennis players, uh, let's, you take Federer, Nadal, Medvedev, and uh, Djokovic, and you stick them in Madison Square Garden on an exhibition, you'll have some interest because right. tennis is huge. You put them in New York at the U.S. Open in the biggest tennis tournament in the world, and seven hundred fifty thousand people pay tickets. Tens of millions of people watch them on TV. It's not that difficult. Okay. Right. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, is that if you don't have a local presence at the tournament site, a local promoter, you're done. Tournaments are incredibly complex to run. They're very operationally intense is the the actual technical term. It takes a lot. And you can't run them from Orange County or you can't run them from Switzerland. Somebody on the ground has got to be responsible for that tournament. In the 90s, even though we had Miller as a sponsor, Miller has their distributor network. So Miller doesn't sell beer to people. They sell beer to distributors. So in every city we went to, the local distributor was responsible for marketing the tour, getting the tour together, the, you know, getting the, the city on board, doing the local promotion, going the advertising and all that. Right? Who, is the local promo- who is the local promoter in Fort Lauderdale? Who's the guy? Like the Vanderwerp of... I don't yeah. think uh, there was. Exactly. I don't think there you. is, right? Yeah, couldn't tell. Right? Well, if nobody's there whipping up, you know... It's uh, just the AVP. They're just coming to town and doing it. Yeah, well, right. there you go. So, and you see what happens. Got, yeah, yeah, yeah. They got to know the local bars or whatever, like uh, places to market, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, plus, you, you if, if you don't have a local presence, you're not going to get... You're not going to get the revenue that you can get on the on the local side, which makes the tournament like uh, 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 viable okay there's two things that the avp and bally's are doing wrong now or there's two and two things that volley world and cvc ready they are vastly over overestimating how much revenue can come into the sport 
okay? Vastly over overestimating. If you look at their business plans, I haven't seen them, I don't know them, but I guarantee them if they showed them to you, they'd have revenue projections which are insane, all right? Uh, at the height of Beach Fall in the United States, we were doing eight and a half million dollars total revenue. One gender, right? One gender. Yeah. So well, there wasn't even really women's women's beach volleyball back then. Right. Okay, we grabbed the tour and kind of brought some of them on. Right. You know, and and I think when Leonard ripped it up in the two thousands, it got to ten million. So if if Bally's pro- if Bally's of your projections are over three or four million, you, you you've, somebody's been snowing you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you can get Beach Volleyball in the United States to four million dollars, they'll put a statue of you on the Manhattan Pier. Right. <laughs> you're like you'll be a hero of Beach Volleyball. The second thing is again they they underestimate how complicated it is to run an event. All right. My partner Tracy Sang, how you doing? She always likes it when I mention her. <laughs> Love Trace. Yeah. Hi Tracy. Delaney too. You're special. <laughs> Gabby. Right. Yep. Them yep. all in. There you go. So <laughs> <laughs> anyway, she, what she does for a living is she has done a living is puts on events. All right. She worked for Los Angeles magazine before she worked for Philly magazine. She worked for Sunset magazine. She does events. And she can get you on right here and she'll tell you everything you're doing wrong in the events, beach volleyballs, and what you need to do to do them right. Wow. And she she does like the Malibu food and wine event. And they're really complicated. They take a lot of work. You need a lot of people working together. And so they are sort of underestimating how complicated it is to run events. And they're also they're also overestimating my God, the I think I, I the, the dream of these, t- of say the volleyball world, I would imagine, or AVP Bally's, is that they're gonna they're gonna get some sort of like revenue from a tour. So somebody's gonna pay them a rights fee to put on the tour. <laughs> they don't make money, right? right? If they made money, people would be putting them on. Mm. All right, they're right. hard to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what you really want to do is you want these local promote these local people. You want them to give you beach volleyball tournaments. Then if you're the company, then you sell. You sell this tour now. And there's ways to do it. It's all right here. Johnny. <laughs> I want to see this. <laughs> Here's the business plan. And I got the old business plan we did in 2010. It a cool volleyball, actually. You know, it's like, it, was a, it was a graphic. I, I don't do graphics. But, so. now you, does that make sense? It makes perfect sense. What about sense. Like the, uh, the product itself? Like, what is the, the product? product what beer are we drinking? Let's give a little shout out to s- yeah. Kona Brewing Kona Company. Brew. Big Wave Golden Ale. Liquid Aloha. Yes. Liquid Aloha. Appreciate there it. you go. Thank you, Kona. Thank you for supporting the tour, too. That's well, I awesome. feel like Thanks, one thing that our sport is missing big time, and obviously I'm biased because I'm one of the players, is building up the characters, the people that, like you're mentioning, the Nadals and Djokovic and them. The only, why do people come to the event? Because those guys are celebrities, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you got to build up these characters, and really the only people helping do that for us is us. And the, <laughs> like, the McKibbins. And the McKibbins, right, <laughs> yeah. who, are, who are players because they can kind of understand that. Back in the day, I don't know how it was for you. It seems like you guys were basically running the tour at the same time while playing. Oh, yeah? So it was a lot different. I was. See, so. <laughs> Same thing was. You were, right, yeah. John Stevenson, Mike Dodd. <laughs> that is a lot yeah. different than how it's yeah. going today. But I feel like we're kind of going that direction where we're kind of realizing, like, if we want something to happen, we better do it ourselves. Well, it's funny, but you said that, right? Complexity, narrative, communication. Mm-hmm. We got into complexity. Now we're talking narrative, mm-hmm. right? The stories that you can tell right. out of a sport. And it can be challenging, especially in sort of a tour sport where you have a ranking because it's the same guys are kind of at the top. What you, what you do not see now, which we had back in the 90s, was there was an, in, there was an industry surrounding the sport. Right. So Volleyware was like $200 million, depending on it. There was, there's an industry. And so we had individual sponsors. You, you could tell right away, look at a tournament. Go, go back and look at our tournaments. Look at the new tournaments, what, how we're draped in sponsors. Yeah. Right. Like we were like NASCAR <laughs> racers, yeah, okay? Sure. I, like, I got I, I a ridiculous hat with five different freaking Hawaiian tropics on it. I had a sh- big field. <laughs> Big ass feel in my butt. I had like Ford. I had yeah. I had Oakley glasses, and they were responsible for promoting us, right? Uh. So we worked. I we worked with the, the so. All right, the tour had a PR agency. The individual, you know, the promoter who was the distributor had PR and advertising. We work with them. Um, our sponsors were promoting us because, again, the more we got ourselves out there, the more they got us out there, the more money we made from our sponsors. So right. everybody's winning. Everybody's happy. That's the difference, you see. So that what are you talking about? We're talking about promoting the athletes. Well, who's going to do it? Okay, who? where's the money coming from? So for us, it was I wanted to go 
promote myself because I got better sponsors, more money from my sponsors. My sponsors promoted me. They put me in advertising. They put me in uh, magazine um, ads. They put me in all sorts of stuff. The tour, I wanted to promote the tour, so they put us on, you know, Good Morning America. They put us on The Tonight Show. They put us on, well, I guess it would be now, pod, they, you, know, you go out and do podcasts right. you know, or whatever. <clears throat> and they don't do that. Wow. Yeah, we wow. that <laughs> big time. <laughs> and they wonder, like, well, I, well nobody's coming. Gee. Yeah. <laughs> Shocking. <Right. laughs> and the, like, so our audience is a very beach volleyball centric audience. And I think one of the things that we're missing is the undecided whale. Like, how do we get the people from outside whale. of beach volleyball to find beach volleyball and stick with it? Like, how do we communicate these narratives? Outside of the sport. Well, first of all, explain to them the uh, sports roulette and the undecided whale to our to so our audience out there. Sports roulette. If you stay with the sport long enough, you will hear it. Yeah, sports roulette. I've mentioned on the podcast a couple times since talking to you. Every time I talk to you, I feel like I've gotten like econ one hundred and one, <laughs> business two hundred and two. Just every time I talk to Kent, I get a different course in Love business. That. So sports roulette is basically comparing. You know, at the beginning of the year, a lot of players are like, well, the PGA Tour makes X amount of money for a twenty first. And we're making X amount of money for this. And it's like, well, if you watch the U.S. Open, they have 2 million people there. If you watch Austin, we have 250. <laughs> so it's <laughs> kind of a bad comparison. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so it's basically making erroneous comparisons to other sports and wondering why we can't be like that sport. Uh-huh. Yeah, so like, Did oh, you know, like F1, correct? we should do this. You're like, right. yeah, that'll we should work. Do a, what, th- we should do that show that they do. Well, the, yeah, just to make that show, it costs more than to make that yeah. our whole tour run. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yes, it is a good the show. Last 10 years. <laughs> yeah. So that's sports roulette. That's sports roulette. And then, uh, then there's the undecided whale, which is basically if we do X, then we're going to start to capture the 24 to 35 age demographic that we haven't yet captured. So this huge undecided whale that we can bring in eyeballs and attention and revenue right. from. Yeah. So this is what happens. The hopium strategy, which is hope on opium. Ah. You, know, you, you, get, you put the hopium strategy in. in here you use that. a little bit of, uh, yeah, you know, a little sports roulette. Well, if we just do like this sport, then, of course, the undecided whale. All these people that just wait, can't wait to watch volleyball will come storming in like big whales. <laughs> Double thumbs up on that strategy. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> yeah, when you hear it. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a one that's a non-sports roulette. When I, name me one of these sports you talked about that doesn't have a local presence, a local promoter. NFL, MLB, NHL, you know, NBA. They all have local teams that promote their local. Uh, uh, golf has all the tournaments are owned by an, a local company. Same with tennis. All the tennis tournaments have a local promoter. Right? One thing I thought was so fascinating was when you mentioned that NFL, PGA Tour, they're all nonprofits. Of course they and are. And then it's that franchise model where they're actually the businesses where the AVP is one of the only professional sports that I know, and I didn't realize this at first, that it's a publicly, you can buy it. You can buy a for-profit company. Yeah. yeah that's a problem. It's a for-profit company. <laughs> that's a big problem. So the, the one for-profit company doesn't make any profit, <laughs> and the one nonprofits make ridiculous amounts of it it's it's really simple guys hit it where they ain't all right here you go ready if the guys over here where do you hit it you hit it there (laughs) and if they're there you hit it there (laughs) it's it is it's it's mind-boggling or just be a meathead and just hit it as hard as you can every time yeah no 54 (laughs) i played 13 years and I, i i was again i was on the top and not only just as an athlete, but in the business side, too. And, you know, we ran our own companies. With, I did my own sponsorship deals and all that. Yeah, and you see these things and you watch them. It's just, it's, it's weird like that. Yeah. Before we wrote the book and I sort of dragged you back in to the world of beach volleyball. So you suckered like, me. I, I dragged you back me. in. He's in the South Bay right now. I'm in the goo. How, <laughs> God, if I don't get out soon. When I saw you out. at Six Man, Ken, I about fell over. I was like, they're the last place in the world I expected to see Ken Steffes was Six Man. I was and there. You, you seem to enjoy yourself. God, I can't. That's why I can't go. I was so excited. Yeah, my heart was pounding. I was gonna have a heart attack, which would have been really <laughs> bad because I would have died at the six man <laughs> in the goo. That's fitting. I was just so excited. My heart was pounding. I was about to pass out. That's how excited I was. Yeah. I just I remembered how great it was. I I love playing beach volleyball. I love playing beach volleyball. I loved going to tournaments when I was a kid. Then when I was a player, I couldn't wait to get out there and start playing. And then it just it just all floods back to me that's why i really can't come around and go yeah because i'll die it's just too exciting <laughs> it was too exciting <laughs> so fun so fun beach volleyball is so fun it's a yeah. great sport it's an amazing sport it is yeah. it is for sure yeah right you got that love or else you wouldn't have been doing it oh for sure 
I, I think about it all the time. Like, right? Still having fun, right? <laughs> I still think about it. I'm 54. <laughs> I'm sitting, 20, in the, whatever. <laughs> sitting in the plane uh, with my knees indented from the <laughs> seats. Like, yeah. This is fun, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah the travel kind of sucks. How but fun is this? Sitting in the tent for four hours staring at nothing. Yeah. But how much had you been kind of still paying attention to the sport over the years until we started working on the book together? Because now, I mean, now you're kind of back into it, at least for the time being. And you're like very knowledgeable about what's going on. Yeah, well, it's, you know, it's, 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 a simple, it's, it's a simple sport. I played it. I also went to business school, so I kind of get it. Yeah. I can catch up onto it fast. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm sort of aware. And to be honest, like, oh, so over the years, not only do people ask me about books and, and Netflix series and documentaries, which are not going to happen, except the book, Kings of Summer, or go by Amazon. it, Amazon.com, Amazon. Yeah. and Borders, and <laughs> Barnes & Noble. They still have those. Are those, yeah, what, are those still things? I think they still have. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Are they? Old, but uh, people call me all the time, uh, investors in investment groups, when the tour comes up for sale and when they're looking to invest money. So I always have an insight of when it's going to go bankrupt again and when it's going to change <laughs> hands. So like in 2010, a group called me like, "Hey, we hear the we hear the AVP tour is going to go bankrupt in a year." Uh, we're looking at it right now. I'm like, oh, that's too bad. Does anybody else know? No, they didn't know. <laughs> oh, no. So they're like shocked. Like Manhattan didn't happen in 2010. Like, whoa, where did this come from? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I do get pinged a lot. Yeah. So I, I see the business. I see some of the business plans and I see some of the PowerPoint presentations. And I, yeah. And you, you made a bid for one. And was it 2010 you were trying to get in? Uh, the group I was with, they made a bid. Yeah. yeah. They, well, they actually bought the AVP. They had it under contract in 2010 and they couldn't organize the players. Uh, there was actually two bids. One was the save the tour. Well, actually, there was a bid in, two, in 1998 to uh, to keep the tour out of bankruptcy back then. There was one in 2010. And, yeah, yeah. I, I heard about the Bally's purchase before they announced it. Yeah. Well, well before. Yeah. It's, you know so many things that you're texting me. I'm like, how do you know this? Who's who's your source? Who's your deep throat in there? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I think that this, as athletes and players – and maybe fans, you're like so focused, right? You got to be focused on the surf that you're just, you're just, you're trees and not forest. The mm-hmm. moment you get out of it, you kind of can see what's going on. And, and again, you know, the Bally's purchase didn't happen overnight. They right. did due diligence. They looked at it. You know, Don was out selling it. He was out pitching it. He was trying to raise money for it. And the, the community's small. And again, they, you know, they call me almost every time yeah. when they want. So in 2010, yeah, we put in an offer. We actually had, the, we had, the, we had it on, we had it under contract. <laughs> Five hundred thousand dollars. Don Sun paid two million. Not good. <laughs> he overpaid. <laughs> <laughs> but but then we just couldn't we couldn't organize the players. They were always too mess. What what happens is what happens is, is that everybody like wants to own it. Everybody wants to control it, which is why the nonprofit model is so important, right? At the moment everyone wants to control it or own it, you're you're just fighting mm. over no, nothing that's there. Yeah. And you can't you, you can't build it. You can't grow it. And that yeah. makes a lot of sense, actually. Especially some of the times the players. The players just think they deserve to own it, right? Right? I mean, if anybody deserves to own a sport, it might have been Tiger Woods with golf. Right. Right? Or Jordan or Kobe. Like, yeah. if Kobe's like, I should own the Lakers. That doesn't happen. Yeah. But, yeah, so it's, it's not going to happen. Did you – I mean, you got out as a player not of your own choice when you were 30. The tour went bankrupt. Right. Tour the went business, bankrupt. The business went under. Right. So not by your own choice. No. But <laughs> – it's tough for an athlete to retire, even at, I mean, we're seeing right now, I mean, Tiger's still limping around and all these guys are hanging on, but you went out, you didn't go out, the tour went out when you were in your prime. How tough, was that tough for you to like move on or were you kind of, I mean, you won <laughs> don't nine of 17 tournaments your last year. That's, that's pretty dang good. Only nine of 17? That's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> that's not good. No wonder. <laughs> The players were so the guy can't fire the guy up. Imagine how happy ever all the other players were. Just, oh, you're leaving? <laughs> Ken's gone. All right, see you later. It's like Ken. you with Phil oh, or and Jake. Yeah, not too. Bye, boys. Not too bummed about it. That was actually really nice of what you wrote about in Volleyball Mag in that article because I, I actually didn't realize it. Yeah, you talked about how I ended in you know uh, at this point in my career. I wish I didn't. I wish the tour went on. I wish the tour didn't go bankrupt. I would have played. Yeah, but. At the time, the tour was transitioning to the FIVB tour internationally. There weren't that many tournaments. Mm. Uh, They were spaced out. I would have had to move to Europe. And I just said, you know, I'll go do other things. I had other things to do. And, again, I would have loved to play. I would have still played. Yeah. And what year did the tour come back? 2000? (laughs) 2000. Well, when Leonard picked it up, 
I think they had 150, 300,000 in total revenue for the sport and a few events. There was, remember Beach Volleyball America, that yeah. ridiculous thing? That was pretty dumb. Oh, oh there's yeah. Fumble. Uh, Still up. And he kind of got a lot, he got a bunch of investment money. He was doing a pump and dump. You know, they put in 60 million. Shoot. Was there any temptation at that point to come back? Well, you were like three years out at that point. No, God, I don't think it really got going until 2004 or five, maybe, oh, okay, right? Okay, like, gotcha. it took them a couple years at least oh, to gotcha. kind of build it up. Like, they had events, but the prize money took yeah. a little bit of time yeah, to yeah, snowball. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Kind of like now with the Tour Gold Professional Loyola, Super Loyola Series. Loyola was playing, right? Didn't he play in the beginning? Well, you guys played with. Jose said that you were his favorite partner he's ever played with. Damn right, Jose. <laughs> <laughs> I got to play with Adam Johnson before me. <laughs> I play with Adam. He's a good guy. <laughs> but uh, a little quiet. Just likes to sit in the hotel room all day. <laughs> Didn't I? Jose, yeah. Jose was a whole different thing. Opposite. You know, it's funny because I, I stopped playing with Karch in 1996. Uh, we won the gold medal in 1996. We had been dominating the tour for years, number one team. He actually had shoulder surgery, so he wasn't even going to get to play in the beginning. I, had to, I called Jose, and I said, you know, you and AJ are like the number two team, so you'd probably be the number one team, but I want to break you guys up, yeah. and uh, I want to play with you because I think we'd be awesome. And he called me back. He goes, "Yeah, man." And we came out on fire. We were we were crushing teams. I don't even know what the strategy would have been against you guys because watching old Jose film is insane. Strategy serve out. <laughs> that's, your, that's your best service because you don't get embarrassed. No, Jose was phenomenally good. First of all, again, the athletes now are taller, right? They shrunk the court. They yeah. changed the rules. Right. Shorten the games. Bigger athletes. So. He was good size. He had super long arms. He could jump so high. Mm -hmm. He would just hit the ball so hard. He was on. I I I I set him so bad on one play. It was like it was like fifteen foot line, like half half court, like a half court, (laughs) not even like a back row attack. He was like he had he was going backwards and he jumped up and he crushed the ball so freaking hard and all like down your head would have spun. (laughs) He was just phenomenal to play with. Really fun. Loved UFO. Thought UFOs were everywhere, which is kind of cool. So he was he was. Vince, the UFOs were coming out anytime now. <laughs> he was just, he was the best. And then we had Mangus. <laughs> Jimmy Mangus was his coach. He was sleeping on the floor in between our beds in the hotel room. Amazing. Oh, oh God, God, it was great. Mangy. Hey, Mangy. <laughs> <laughs> and then Mangy would be yelling at us at the timeouts, and we'd be laughing at him. Jose was- coached us for, what, four years? Oh, yeah? And, uh, yeah, me and Trev, and uh, he would always bring up stories about Mangus and be, like, <laughs> yelling in, in that same voice, just like... Face where you sat. <laughs> I just have it like replaying in my head because Jose would do impressions of Jim Mangus. Like, every well, first day. he gets so he gets so excited and he couldn't talk. He just starts spitting on us, which was always fun. <laughs> like, are you saying I should cut the ball or go line? Right? And like, I only have two shots, yeah, so it's not really much you, you can tell me as a coach. I hit the angle and I shoot line. Don't tell anybody. Wait, I'm, my career is over. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so Jose, right? Jose could go up, jump, and hit the ball over the block, kind of down to the back, and we would win every match. Like, Emmanuel Rego was the same way, too. He was awesome. He'd just look at you, and you just go, poof, or wherever you are. Other way. So, but Jose would get bored, right? He's like, this is boring. I want to hit the ball straight down. So every once in a while, he'd get bored, and he'd hit the ball at the bottom of the net. Mm-hmm. We'd give up a point. <laughs> and, of course, the, everybody else knew what was going on. Jose's bored. And the one thing you don't want is a bored Brazilian. That's a, <laughs> not a good thing. Brazilians are super happy people. You do not want a bored Brazilian. So he hits the first ball in the bottom of the net every time, and the other team knows exactly what's going to happen. He's going to try to crank it as straight down as you can. And he hits it straight in the box, straight down. Now we just gave it up two points. So Mangus is over there yelling at him, screaming, hit the ball over the block. Like, don't hit it down. <laughs> right. And I'm like, I'm like, Mangus, will you please quiet, all right? Like, he's like, but Kent, he's, he's hitting the ball straight down. He's not. I go, really? I know that, all right? Like, we got to, like, don't you understand the problem? Manga's like, oh, okay, cat, cat. And, <laughs> and Jose's like, oh, but Kent, I want to hit the ball straight down. I want it to bounce really high. I want the cow to go crazy. Yeah. And I want to walk around. And that's going to make me feel good. I said, well, that's the problem, right? The problem isn't that Jose's hitting the ball in the bottom of the net or getting blocked. The problem is we have an unhappy Brazilian. And that's the problem. Mangus doesn't get it. So it's like trying to teach a, you know, what is that, what's the old farmer thing? Try, don't try to teach a pig to sing because it's a waste of time and it annoys the pig. All right? <laughs> so Mangus yelling at Jose to shoot the ball over the block is like trying to teach a pig to sing. It's just a waste of time and it's annoying it's Jose. Yeah. And Jose, so, I, so he's like, but Ken, he's hitting the ball in the block. I know. Like, 
we got a problem. I understand that. But the problem is not the hitting style of Jose. It's the happiness of the Brazilian, <laughs> which is the critical thing. So I said, okay, this is what I'm going to do, Jose. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to pass the, or set the ball towards the middle of the court. You're going to come running in and you're going to act like you're going to crank the ball. And you're going to, and the guy's going to drop it in your angle. And the moment he drops your angle, you turn line and you pound that thing as hard as you can. He goes, okay, okay. I'm like, good. Manga, sit down and be quiet. And you're going to have a heart attack. And he's going to die. <laughs> and he's spitting everywhere. It's just horrible. So, so, so f- perfect. Jose passes me perfectly. Instead of set, serving him where I am, or setting him where, he's, where I normally do, I set him way inside. He comes charging in. Guy drops an angle. He turns in. He pounds that ball straight down. And the ball goes straight up. And the crowd goes nuts. And he starts going around like, yeah. And he goes, now, Kent, I feel really good. <laughs> I said, that's really good. I go, I go, I can, hit I go can we you. hit the high line now? He goes, yes, yes. But if I get bored, can I go back to hitting the ball straight down again? I said, no problem, but just let us know first. We'll try, we'll try to figure a play out for you to do that. He goes, but Kent, you saw me hit the ball. Yeah, I saw you hit the ball. You saw it bounce. And you, I saw it bounce. And did you hear the crowd, Kent? I heard the crowd, Jose. Do you see how happy I am? I see how happy you are. And we would win every tournament when he was happy. Every tournament. Oh, that's so anyway, good. That's one, one thing that Jose said about you is that he never felt more confident in with anyone else that he was going to win a tournament. He said, Kent Steffes is the best winner I've ever been on a team with. And that was something that you developed early. Hmm? How did you develop that sort of, I don't want to say like killer instincts kind of cliche, but just the ability to win? Because you've admitted to yourself, you're like, at high line. And I swung angle. Like, you weren't the most physically remarkable guy like a Jose, but you won. That's what I said to Travis guy. before. I was <laughs> like, I wasn't it's physically. weird, because I watch, I pull up footage of you, <laughs> and I've watched you and Jose play. I'm like, he looks like an eight across the board. Like, if, if, you haven't, if you don't look at his resume and look at how many times he's winning, he's really probably a 9.5 across the board. But your game looked like an eight across the board. It looks simple. That's a that's a that's generous. Because the reason why I focused on winning was because I was really bad at all the other parts of beach volleyball, huh. and uh, that was the truth. Uh, so I I could hit and I could serve okay, but I wasn't the best hitter on the tour. I wasn't the best server on the tour. And blocking, I wasn't even close to the top. Defense, my defense was horrible. <laughs> uh, my setting was like pretty much hit or miss, or hit or miss at the time. So yeah. if you looked at any of the individual skills, I wasn't any good at them. So I said, all right, well I'm going to focus on winning, and I'm going to become the best at that. And surprisingly enough, not everybody's focused on winning. And when you focus on winning, you set yourself what I call the winning mindset, and you set that as your goal. My goal is to win, period. You amazingly get really good at it. So I believe it's a skill that you can learn. I believe it's a skill that you can train. And hmm. like passing, setting, hitting, it's a skill you can get better at, and it's called winning. So Is it a lot of it like technical stuff, strategic stuff, or is it just like you're just manifesting it because you have intention to win and – so every th- action that you're taking is just moving towards that that goal. Yeah, you're a pretty brilliant I mean, guy. I'm sure a lot of it was strategic. Because I- I'm trying to steal some of it, but I'm like, well, I can't be Kent Steffes. I didn't go to Stanford. I, b- I barely got into SC. So which parts can I take here? Well, it, it, there, there, it's all of that. But mm. it, all right. So the first thing is is all right. Here's the here's the tragedy of volleyball or beach volleyball, and it's kind of more confused with the. Um, with the scoring on every play, the rally scoring versus mm. the side-out scoring. But it's one of the only sports where the defense scores, okay? Yeah. So on most other sports, the offense scores, you, and it's in your hands. You know, you get to take the shot. You get to pass the ball or run the ball. You get to kick the soccer ball in the goal. You get to hit the forehand winner. But in volleyball, you're trying to stop the other team's offense, right, if you look at it that way. And the problem is, especially when we played on the large court with the rules, is it's, it's really hard to stop a, a, a volleyball offense. So mm. you get you, – you, you, it, it's frustrating. It's frustrating because if the other team is looking at you and seeing where you are and hitting the ball where you're not, you're not going to win. Right. And that can be very challenging for people. So you have to really fight, stay in a game, and stick with it. And again, rally scoring doesn't change that fact, right? You have to move your score away from the other, other team. And the only way you can do that is by scoring on defense. Mm-hmm. Right? So, you know, we were playing the 1991 World Championships, Hav and I against Sinjin and Randy, and we were up. I've told this story in both games. Two out of three to 12. We were up. I thought I was going to win. I was a young guy, and we got smoked. They came back and did not make a mistake. And if you don't make a mistake and be about it, you're not going to lose. So if the other team's not making a mistake, you're going to lose. And that's hard for people to take. Mm-hmm. So they create within themselves and their mindset 
uh, protections, right? Because you know, it's really technical, but losing is kind of damaging on a, on a psychological and a neurological right. yeah, basis. Yeah, yeah. Your serotonin levels are affected. Your pathways get affected by losing, right? When two rams run into each other, the one who loses is damaged on multiple levels. So as a human being, you have the ability to reframe the experience. So you have to do a lot of reframing when you're playing. So you're uh. losing, 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 and then wow, you get a point, right? So you got to stick in there. And when you start saying, I'm going to win, you start looking at these from a technical way, like, how, all right, so what do I have to do? Like, what, all right, I, I, I cannot do anything if they're playing well. So what can you do? You have to wait for them to make a mistake. You have to wait to know what they're going to do. They're tells. So when you're charting a match, like, so if I block line and you hit an angle and I block line, you hit an angle and I block line, you hit, charting your angle is not going to divvy anything. Right. Because the chart shows you did it right. That's what blows my mind when people do the scouting reports for me. I'm like, well, did they block line? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I bet they blocked mm. line there. Like, yeah, but every, he hits angle. Look how many times he hit angle. Like, well, yeah, mm. like, you just do what the defense isn't doing. Yeah. So, like, this isn't really helping me too much. Because if I block mm. angle... <clears throat> I bet he won't hit angle. <laughs> okay, there you go, guys. No, I was in the 90s. It's now 2022. They still, still don't know how to chart. <laughs> it's simple game, okay? <laughs> and when you fo- again, when you focus on winning and you sit there and look at that disposition, you're the defense, you have to try to score, and it's impossible. Right? If Phil Dahlhauser has a set on the net and there's no block, you have no choice. You're done. Go get a drink of water. But what right. can you do? You might make a mistake. So what you're looking for in charting is you're looking for when they make a mistake. You're looking for their tells, right? Sports is a competitive motion thing, so people do the same thing, and there's a lot of brain chemistry involved, but they initiate action before the action occurs, and you can c- tie into that. You might, you might you, well, so the first step is what is your opponent doing? What do they do? What do they normally do? Karch pitter-patters his feet when he hits the line. Karch on transition always cuts the ball. Okay, Ricky Ludis, if you soft block him, the next bl- t- ball he comes, he tries to crank it, you know. When Jose gets bored, he's going to hit in the bottom of the net. You don't have to worry about that one. But the next one after that, you can block him. It's really easy, right? So once you start noticing these patterns, you're waiting, waiting, because you're not going to get – Sinjin is staring at you. He's a perfect passer. Randy's a perfect setter. He's looking at you, and he's standing on a platform Mm. just going like this. There's nothing you can do. But when he gets in trouble or you get a tough serve and he pitter-patters his feet, you know right where he's going, and you're on that. So that – so That's the one point you need. That's the only thing you can do. Right. That's the hard part. That's it. Because if he doesn't do it, you're in trouble. Mm. And again, I didn't win all my tournaments, and I didn't even win half, but I won more than anybody else. Sure. And that's my plan. That was what I tried to do. So again, I knew I couldn't win them all. I knew, but the best I could do. The, again, too many people try to have these unbelievable digs. Again, I was a horrible defensive player, right? Horrible. And I couldn't dig at all. <laughs> <laughs> but I could key on their mistakes, right? So. Um, too many guys want to make the great block or the great dig. You see him go running this way as the ball's being hit that way, and you're going, why are you running that way and the ball's going that way? Or they think they're going to make a dig on the move, which the Sinjin can. And actually, I, I saw Hag and his son do it. It's possible, but it's the low probability. It's, the, the point isn't to make spectacular or great plays. That's not volleyball. Those are other sports. Other sports, if you make a spectacular play, it will lead to success and winning. In volleyball, you have to make you have to make as many of the points you should make. Right. And when you're charting, all the people who are out there charting, you need to chart how much how many times the team made the play when they absolutely should have. So you see a you see the offense do something and maybe hit a shot, and it falls in between the two guys, and the guy's got cement feet, and he doesn't move, and he, all he has to do is go two feet and get it up. He would have gotten the point and doesn't. That's bad. Right? That's bad. Okay, the play before he dove and you know, you see it all the time, the big hit and they hit so right. oh I could have had that. I yeah, could have yeah, dug yeah. it. No, you're not. Right. That was how I thought about it. That's the way I did it. Simple. Right, Tra- and Trav won't listen to me. These athletes, they don't listen to you. It's hard to get through to them. His block. <laughs> just, you know, by the and you want some more? All right. So you yes. got you don't come, come fa- you're, you're too slow in the approach. It's, it's unbelievable. you gotta be faster on the approach. Your step close has gotta be faster. You're setting, you're leaning back. You gotta be mo- oh, no, never mind. Never mind. There's a lot wrong with my bump setting. <laughs> he has the excuse that he uh, hasn't been playing that for years, so he's all open yeah. book. Look, vol- all right, ready here. I'm going to tell it to you right now. If you're a volleyball player and you want to <laughs> win the gold medal, I can tell you exactly on the chain what you're doing wrong. Uh, okay? I'll, I'll take this. Yep. Well, <laughs> uh, we'll take a look at you. It's a simple game. You hit it where they're not. All right? You wait for their mistakes. 
You could, we could just take that, what I call a chain, right? You pass the ball, footwork, step close, jump, vision. You have your standard set. I can tell you what broke in the chain and where you need to work on it. And if you work on that and you get it done, you'll win. All right? So that's tough. It's tough. The athletes don't want to be told they're doing stuff wrong, right, Traff? You seem to <laughs> bristle at it. Nobody wants to be told they're doing something, especially athletes. They're all tough guys. Oh, yeah, tell yeah, me yeah. what's going on. That's the sport. That the sport is it's not, it's not very it's not very complex versus other sports. You can tell what went wrong every mm. time. And it's not necessarily a physical thing, it could be a mental thing or an emotional thing. Right? Passing passing is like it, it's 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 like you know, like a drive to get to the right spot. It's so setting, right? You see people floating into the set. Like it, it's it's an emotional, it's a mental thing. Like mm-hmm. get, get like ready. You're, you're looking at the you're looking at the server. You're looking at his eyes. Why do you look at his eyes? Because they always look where they're going to serve. Did you know that? Didn't know that. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but I've, I've thought about that a lot. Yeah. All, right. So all of a sudden they go like this, <laughs> well, and that's where they're serving. On too. Doesn't matter. Look at the nose. All right. Same mm-hmm. thing. They they do this. You could always tell where they're going to yeah, serve. Totally then of course. Going. You know, a, a ball is a trajectory. If, you, if your arm is going this way, where's the ball going? All right, it's not that hard. Right. You got to move your feet. Right? You got to get a lot of people. Oh, you kind of get a little lazy sometimes. You got to fight to get in the right position. You got to be working on your arms, and making sure that you can pass for one arm, not two. All these these sites. I, I, you know what? I don't keep up. This is why Travis, because I, I go, I go <laughs> online and I see like volleyball tips. This is how you pass. Oh, First, God. you have your platform. It's like so that. hard to watch. It's, it's, the it's, social it, media stuff it, nowadays. It, yeah. it, Anyone can make a video. Oh my god! It's, <laughs> 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 there it's was serve the heart of the court. I'm like, what the hell is that? <laughs> like, I'm like, I'm like, that's the wrong way. I, but never mind. I'm done. All right, I'm done. I'm done. I'm not. I don't play anymore. I don't play. <laughs> I would love to break down the film session because I legitimately would picture myself going into that, being like, all right, I'm an idiot. Like. Do I really want to tell him how much I don't think out there? <laughs> I'm like brainless. Like, well, look, again, it's hard. Like, get the, all right. So the reason why I get, on, I like to get on Travis and yeah. we have a good time with it. That's how athletes are. Coaching athletes is difficult. So I, I didn't just play. I've studied it a lot. I re, that's what I do as a hobby. And I got my job. I'm in finance or in a hedge fund. But in my hobbies, I read books. Mm. Uh, look, it was uh, Phil Jackson had it up to here trying to get Jordan to run the triangle offense. He didn't want to. Kobe said, I effing hate the triangle mm-hmm. offense. Shaquille wouldn't listen to him. Belichick's players, when a Kozar in Bledsoe would not run the offense that the greatest coach of all time wanted to run. It's, it is what happens in that interaction between athletes and coaches when you're trying to adjust an athlete in yeah. a certain area. But if your goal is to win, right, then you will sort of take that feedback or look into that. And, and you got to have a lot of you got to have a lot of courage. You got to you got you got to be an athlete. You got to want to kick people's asses. Yeah. You want to want to get out there like. First of all, if you were any smartness, you wouldn't have been an athlete. <laughs> Everybody told you to do something differently. Like that, that was good. Shouldn't have come out from Baltimore to Los Angeles and done this. <laughs> yeah. Fucking, yeah. Go be a lawyer, I, for I God's God sake. Why aren't you a lawyer or something like that? Something I'd good. rather be homeless, Kent. Of course, yeah. Well, you want to be homeless. <laughs> you know, when I was playing, they're like, what do you want to do after college? I'm like, I'm going to be a beach volleyball. They're like, no, what are you going to do like after college? And I go, I think I'm going to be a yeah, volleyball player. Like, that sounds like, fun well, no, really, for a job. I go, I think I can make money as a volleyball player. Like, they give it like, Oh, okay. You're one of those. Oh, people. you're gonna be homeless. <laughs> uh, oh, you're one of those homeless people. <laughs> so yeah. So it, it is. It is well known. So again, it is well known. Uh, you know how athletes act, what the what the problems are, yeah. why it's difficult for them to execute triangle offense. All right, Durant and Kerr got into it. Mm. And they had to send Durant away, yeah. right? Look at Durant, and then right, you know, Golden State like this came back up. Durant's having problems in Brooklyn, right now. He, working with athletes, getting them to do the, you know, the you, the triangle offense guarantees the win. You just need a, the players. It's easy to get three guys who are going to be all stars, and you run the triangle offense or the flex mo, or motion flex, which is what Kerr does. Yeah, San Antonio offense. I mean, the, the, what is it in football? It's the West Coast offense, short passes. No quarterback wants to do it. They want to be the hero. They want to throw downfield. Right? If they're looking for the big play downfield, Manziel style, yeah. right? If they're looking for that, they've lost, they've lost all the options before. Uh, you, talk to, you listen to athletes on the Patriots, they're, they're bored. They're, they hate practices. They hate yeah. just practices. They're bored during them, but they do it because they can win Super Bowls possibly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's super you know? interesting. Tony yeah. Dungy says the same thing. Says, Guys won't read the reads. He's like, I told you if he moves his foot this way, they're going this way. What happened? Like, ah, you know, I didn't know. I wasn't sure. 
He's like, I wanted to lay I didn't want to get out. burned. I don't, yeah, whatever. <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I want to knock yeah. a guy down. I, I wonder how much <laughs> social media has influenced that as well that you don't want to, like you mentioned, I don't want to get burned. Like, I don't want to end up on the wrong Instagram account. I don't want to end up on Bounce Beach getting, you know, Taylor Sander bouncing mm-hmm. one right in front of my face. Yeah. Uh, and I wonder how much that has impacted, back. like, you know, Jose. Like, if he were, if he played during the Instagram era, I definitely feel I, I wonder how different I'll be honest. Yeah. Like, I'm listening to him, like, oh, yeah, I'm going to be that kind of player. And then I'm like, wait, I definitely, like, hit some balls and decide, like, yep, he's going to bounce block me if, if he's smart here. Right. But, if it gets through, I might bounce it. So, yeah, <laughs> screw it. I'll, I'll give up that point. Yeah. Absolutely, that goes through my head. Yeah. And I'm like, and before the ball even hits the ground, I'm like looking at my partner, like, yeah, my bad. <laughs> that one's on me. And I'm already walking back. Like, mm-hmm. I just gave that one up, but it would have been cool. Yeah, so, you know, yeah, but you don't have cars as part of Oh, God. Uh, oh, oh, well, I, definitely don't, like, oh. I don't have Karch as a partner, but I definitely have a, some negative energy coming at me uh, from well, both my last two partners. Uh, no, it's horrible. Like, so we had a different philosophy I did versus Karch. Like, he was much more conservative. He played, he played really, he played probabilities much better than anybody else. But I was a go for it kind of guy. So, yeah, mm-hmm. look, if you don't put the other team in trouble on your serve, your probability of getting a point is lower. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. how I figured out. Mm-hmm. So I would, I would miss more serve and get more aces. Like I'd be jumping around doing things on blocking because I'm trying to get him to. I'm trying to exploit the mistakes, <laughs> not being sneaky. And he would be like, "Oh, you ball, ah, 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 God, God, try, God. and he'd go to the crowd and go, and <laughs> <laughs> be looking at you. <laughs> This is uh, great. I love your coverage. Mm-hmm. It's great. This is it's too good. Hey, it's, it's playing with athletes. It's fun. It's fun. Yeah. It's fun. It's hard. It's challenging. But yeah, and that was you know he he did really well with Sinjin and he did really well with me. But it's not you know, look. I I think I told you this that Probably we were having one man. of our conversations. Yeah. It's not easy to play with some athletes. Mm. It's oh, not yeah. easy. It's not easy to come together as a team. Everyone's like, hey, let's just go a team like the Navy SEALs. Yeah, we'll like try traveling with them. with them all year and oh, have, dear God. dealing with them with, through their highs and lows. And, you know, <laughs> oh, my God, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, you don't no, want to no, hang no. with anyone that much. Yeah. Maybe your significant other. That becomes that. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, there's a game we could play, right? What's that called? Mary F.? Or kill? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll play the 1990s version. Do dump or marry. All right. We're going to Travis. You have to pick a 1990s male beach volleyball player who you want to do, dump or marry. A male. All right. A male. <laughs> so I'll go first. So first, okay. I'll take uh, Sinjin to marry because okay. he's good looking. We'll have good looking kids. And I can't play defense, as I said. So our kids will play defense. <laughs> We're both number one. We'll have a kid. They'll dom- he dominated the 80s. I did the 90s. This next century is ours. Plus, we're both Catholic, which helps. In our there you go. <laughs> The athlete I do is, of course, the Hoff, because he's crazy, and crazy is always better than not crazy, if you know what I mean. Dump. All right, my dump list is rather large and unimpressive, but because uh, I've dumped many players in my life. So that one's an easy one. So I'm going to try to make it fun. If, one of my friends, really good friends, and a good partner I play with, Rudy Dvorak, okay? okay yeah. Rudy Dvorak, love playing with, love the guy, so this is not a knock, but he's a vegetarian. He's one of those weirdos. Okay, this is back in the 90s when uh-huh. that was really weird. Right, right, right. Yeah, for, yeah. So he, and he's not even a pescatarian. You know those weirdo <laughs> vegans that they'll eat fish too? Right, like, right, I'm a vegetarian, but I eat fish. You're like, whatever. So, <laughs> and he would always want to drag me to some vegetarian restaurant. Yeah. All right? So he, but I'm like, I want to have a meat steak or something. I want to have, I want to eat food, like food. <laughs> no, I, I'm not a cow. I don't graze. He'd be like, so we get to some town. He said, no, no, can't do it. I get, uh, there's a great restaurant I read about. It's really good. I said, is it vegetarian? Is it vegan? No. He said, no, it's got everything. We go there, vegetarian restaurant. You're dumped, Rudy. I'm dumping you. <laughs> no vegan restaurants. I love playing with you. Couldn't. Do, all right, you're up. Go. Uh, well, Jose would be the do because he, he's crazy. Oh, he's, he's just he's crazy. Everybody likes Exotic crazy. Exotic speaks a different language. You never yeah. know what's going on with Jose. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. Um, Mary. Uh, I mean, probably you. Oh, that's a look at you. Yeah. Oh, wow. We have a bromance yeah. going on. Yeah, we have a good bromance yeah. going on. We yeah. hug it out. We yeah. say hi. We wrote a book together. We get along. Good. Yeah. We get along great. Long conversations. I like Tracy. Tracy likes Delaney. It works out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then the, the dump of the 90s. Dump. Got to dump a guy. Let's see. Give me a minute to think about that one. I didn't play in that era, so I might have to. Mm-hmm. All right. And I'm to trying to get all the all players out to go through my mind here. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'll you guys can play that at home. Play this at home. 
Well, I had, a, I had one that would make you laugh. Good. Let's hear it. <laughs> Brian Lewis. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> dump that guy. <laughs> the hero. He's in the Hall of Fame because I've knocked him out. What can you say? Yeah. Play, you guys got in a mm-hmm. fight in the player's tent? Is that it wasn't it? really a fight. It was one punch. Well, well, yeah, sure. Whatever you want to call <laughs> yeah, it. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that's my dump. He's out. There you go. He's we, out. He, him, and, him and my wife got in a fight, so he, yeah. he's out. That's a good point. <laughs> there you go. That's <laughs> a good point. Yeah, you got to take my side in that fight. Exactly. All right. I'll, I'll jump in just because we're playing. I like Mike Dodd. I'm going to have to marry okay. Mike Dodd. Good choice. Just it's love quality. that guy. Yeah. Uh, I feel like me and Stoklos probably <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't have, you know, maybe but oh, I thought that was going to be the do. I was like, he's a big guy. Ooh. <laughs> oh, okay. You're, 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 you got, I was like, wow. <laughs> All right, that's a dump. That's it. Stoklos had some good stories when he was on the podcast. Yeah, too. he did. But I feel like, oh, man, he probably would have pissed me off, like, Maybe maybe two similar mentalities. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the third one is do do. Uh, I mean, I don't know why Loyola keeps popping into my head. <laughs> <laughs> like I can't say it. Just you know, hung Gino. out with that. Guy. Ooh, and Genio. And Genio, yeah, he's like the he's smaller cute. version. Little angel. Yeah, little it's angel. Yeah, the little angel. Yeah, well, let's go with that. Blue eyes. <laughs> Ladies would melt. That's a good call. See, there's a lot of guys you yeah. can do on that tour. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I'm sure with the bikini this contest and the Cuervo parties, I'm sure that <laughs> there's some premarital there's, going uh, on. I don't think it's legal anymore, <laughs> most of that stuff. You guys had the cheat code back then. That was like the spring break MTV era, where it's like beach volleyball was just like the perfect sport for that time. Now it's like you're not allowed to drink on the beach. Dogs aren't allowed on the beach. Yeah, you, I don't even think you're allowed to throw a football on the beach. Probably no. not. I'm pretty sure I heard that. Oh, by yeah. the way. Like guys would literally spend the entire month in Florida at spring break in between. Like volleyball tournaments were the kind of the excuse. They're on the weekends, but they stay a whole week. But like big beach parties aren't a thing now. Like that's no, like yeah. you get kicked off the beach. The six man, same thing. Yeah, they f- fence it off. Check your backpack if you have beer. Yeah, the, 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 f- the fun place. You have the out. cheat code. You guys suck, this new generation. Yeah. <laughs> you guys, we had much, we had a lot more fun. This, you know, for now, oh, we could say you know it's much better when we were me, in, going out uh, <laughs> to dinner with uh, or going out with Jose. Period, and and listening to his stories for hours, and as the night goes on, he's just more more and more telling us about how great his parties were and yeah. how great oh, his time God. was. Not only you, you, guys, the, you guys, you guys, you guys are you can't even talk. Don't even talk. You guys don't know how to party. <laughs> you guys don't know what a good party is. <laughs> I'm just like, all right. He was like the That's ambassador, fair. the Brazilian ambassador to L.A., right? You go to over his house, there's like yeah. 50 Brazilian dudes there. <laughs> yeah. And they got that awesome meat with the big, with the big the rock Kanye. stalk they'd put on. Yeah, Kanye, yeah. Oh, my God. Then he started talking about the aliens coming. <laughs> <laughs> so you'd have steak, and you go to those, all those sides they have, too. Yeah. They don't even oh, so the over here a lot for barbecues. Well, his assistant that was assisting us is now our head, mm-hmm. and the third assistant is now our assistant. That's so, incredible. Yeah, my whole team coaches. Yeah. Brazilian. <laughs> we just live on that little mm-hmm. Brazilian between 28th and 30th yeah. down there. Some and genius yeah, out there, Picanha. too. Picanha. In fact, I heard uh, Saturday everyone's might be coming over for a little Picanha. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. One thing that comes up in the book a lot is that they built up beach volleyball as the idea of the permanent vacation. Sure. Right. And we've sort of lost that. And I feel like in the seventies, eighties and nineties, beach volleyball had this sort of identity as this sort of rogue rebel, anti-authoritarian sport that was, if you liked beach volleyball, if you watched it, if you played it, that was your vote sort of against the corporate nine to five for this permanent vacation lifestyle. I feel like now beach volleyball is stuck in this tweener ground of it sort of wants to be professional, but it also, it, doesn't want to be and so it's stuck it still wants to be like that kind of party atmosphere but it's not it's because we're like not. we're we're olympics we're we're professional we're like golf we're playing sports roulette like golf yeah yeah <laughs> that's sports roulette you know, yeah ladies and gentlemen and i was just curious your thoughts on that well first of all everything you said is true except for the part that it, it you can sell anything right there's the business plan right here i wrote it out <laughs> <laughs> so i went to business school <laughs> Fuck it. just call me al lao call me <laughs> you gotta sell what you gotta sell all right and you can do it first of all here's i'll give you a little tip people don't go to sports to watch sport they go because they're having fun 
They go because they like it. So if you can make them like it, they'll come. Sure, we had the parties. Sure, we sure we had the, all that stuff. But you guys are serious professional athletes. It's in the Olympics. You get to watch Olympic athletes, not a bunch of homeless people like we were back in the day. <laughs> yeah. So um, you you sell what you, you sell what you got. That but that's the only thing you can do. They're not again. They're not doing it right. So I, I could again. I could do it. Every you could do it easily. That's all I'm saying. Um, you couldn't do that anymore. It was you can't be like at two in the morning, like drinking shots on the bar right. in, in some in some you know tournament. God, there was a riot in Fresno at the bikini contest. The two girls got in trouble. It was a silicon no silicon deal. It was a technological issue, and their boyfriends started fighting. And there was a biker gang there that decided <laughs> to jump in and like <laughs> Fresno, right? For anybody out there, it's silicon like, or silicone. What is uh, Silicon Valley? Is <laughs> Fresno the silicone? Oh, silicon. No, Valleys are talking about? I was talking breast, if you didn't. Okay, yeah, silicone. Got it. It was a boob, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was yeah, a boob yeah. fight. Got it. Try, come on, keep up here. Don't, don't I was just story. clarifying. <laughs> for the, no, I'm I was there. I was just clarifying mouth. for our fans here. You know, there's a lot of downloads coming in. <laughs> that wasn't the point. The boobs aren't the point. That was the <laughs> so the biker gangs, and then like half the tour, half the guys in the tent jump out and start wailing on people. We used to fight. You <laughs> God. So Hav has got Sinjin pinned on the top of a car because they're in a fight, and he's and he's got a he's got a windshield wiper and he's strangling with him, and he slices off his pinky, okay, and it's dangling there, and he goes to the hospital and he and he gets it he gets it sewn up, and if I've told the story a million times, and if you ask Sinjin this, get him on the but I, I beat I beat Hoff uh, with the with the bandage on him, I beat Hoff. Um, I, so same that's not the funny part of the story him getting his finger sliced off uh, the same <laughs> tournament next year same tournament same weekend fight in the bar Ugh, Sinjin goes back hits his head on the bar thing and it splits open his head okay he goes to the hospital to get stitched up the doctor looks at him and goes don't I know you <laughs> like, weren't you here last year? Like, like, what's wrong with you people? <laughs> okay, I, I got a fight with the Stokelos in one of my first tournaments. Get in my hotel room, destroy the hotel room because <laughs> I told him he sucked when I blocked him. <laughs> got him a little pissed because he was the number one player in the row. I was a little runt kid. Well, we had a. Uh... A guy shoved someone the other day. Gee, yeah, I was like, <laughs> blew up the internet. Seriously, guy does, people does, does look out. like they were hugging and put, like pits. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah. true. Yeah. yeah, and they were laughing about five minutes later in the player's tent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's it's a different story. So you can't do that anymore. But that's fine. That's fine. It is. It's bigger. It's more important. It is serious. It's it's yeah. You know, we'll tell that to the people commenting on all the Facebook posts, like. These players these days, they, they need more passion. They don't care. They, they need to go out and party more, and like make more noise, make more whatever. Be more animated yeah. on the court. Travis, what was the first complaint like, about uh, me when I came on the tour? About you? Yeah. That you're robotic and you just you didn't do, you didn't party. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. And yeah. we, it was never larger than it was when I played. Yep. Okay. And I was considered boring and robotic. Oh, you know, Karch and Ken are boring. They're boring to watch the play. It's, just, it's always right. the same argument. It's always it, it's Todd, always the same Phil argument. And, yeah, Phil and Todd were super boring. We too. were bo- oh, it was boring. They're ruining when, the sport. Boring when Randy and Sinjin won. They won like every damn tournament. They won like eighteen out of twenty three tournaments. They were smoking guy. Oh, yeah. this is boring. They win every time. They always say that. They always yeah. say that because again, the sport lacks complexity. A, a, a bad way of saying that is that it's boring, but I don't believe that. But that's a bad word for it, right? Patriots, boring. Spurs, boring. Yeah, yeah, Golden right? State, boring. Yeah, wow. so, so, but what, why, one of the reasons why it's fun to play is because you get to do everything. Right? You're not a nose tackle in football like my friend George Case, who's now a big private equity guy. He put in an offer for the for the volleyball tour in 2010. They rejected it. Um, and he would run into a guy who was six feet, six inches in front of him for four years. He played at UCLA, and he won a Rose Bowl. That doesn't seem very fun. Like, volleyball is a fun sport. Yeah. You have to do it pass, especially beach volleyball. There's only two guys yeah. or girls, right? So the complexity has, has, has both two sides of a coin. So you're never going to not have a comp. Like, so take, again, I always say this, take javelin. You know, if you start having people run back and forth and the guy gets hit with a javelin and spears them, that would be really exciting. <laughs> right. Wow, gee. <laughs> well, there's not much you can do about it. Right. So what does javelin do? They package it up with a bunch of other sports right. that are called a track and field meet. Mm-hmm. Right? Then they put it in the Olympics every four years, the greatest of them. And yeah. The whole competition is two hours, but tons of people watch them. And the guy's a gold medalist, and everyone knows what that means. You can do it. That's communication. You know, Olympics is great at communication. Again, it's, it's not it's not... It's been done before. It's not rocket scientists. Yeah. Got it right there. Got it. 
for those of for those of our listeners who are only listening, he literally has a what is that? Ten pages. There's other stuff in here too. The the business page is three pages. Oh, it's well. really that simple. Here's simple. this is the business. We have pages. a business plan here. This is the business plan. Everybody, the question is, does anyone get to actually see this thing? <laughs> this would be the mission statement, which you guys can't even get right on this one. But yeah, <laughs> the international beach volleyball play. What the hell is that thing called? Oh yeah, the IBVPA. Oh, dear God, go to their website. Go to their website and read the website. What does it say? It is horrendous. And they. What does it say? You have a computer? No, you, you, don't. you have it right there, don't you? What? I'm no, I have what it should be. Don't, don't, oh, you have what it should be. I, I don't know the, the IBVPA. It says, we statement. at the International Professional Beach Volleyball Players Association seek to work with the stakeholders of the community in order to blah, 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 blah. Like, what is that? Seriously, what uh-huh. should their ambition be? Uh, more tournaments, more money. How about that? Like, what else does a union like do? What is it, what is it, what does an electrical union do? More, more electrical jobs and more money. Right. Teachers union? Yeah, well, pretty simple. <laughs> they want to sound... Uh, <laughs> More fancy, I guess. <laughs> How about, you ready? IBV, listen to me. Listen to me. More tournaments, more money. Just just do that. Just nonstop. But what's the difference in your mind between a tournament and an exhibition? So we have the Elite 16s. All right, you, you determine those a, an exhibition. Let's see if we're To collect the world's best beach volleyball players and have them compete in a meaningful athletic contest in a tournament, not mm-hmm. an exhibition, and on a tour where anyone and everyone can play and participate. Okay, to ensure that the next generation of great beach volleyball players has an easy, straightforward, and low-cost way to enter beach volleyball tournaments and compete on the beach volleyball tour. That is your mission. All right, don't give me your problems. I've seen it happen. It works. So any, any, you know, they're always come. Oh, we can't do it for this reason. We can't do it this reason. Anybody can play. Anybody can play. You guys figure it out. You need more courts. Get more courts. That's where the local promotion comes in. You are, that's the point of a sport. A sport gathers the best athletes in that sport and has them compete against each other. You can't keep people out. You don't know who the best players are or the best athletes are unless they're all there or they can get there within reason, of course. Yeah. All right. I mean, how many, how many golfers are on the PGA Tour or on the whole tour? 100, like, well, 125 have their card. PGA right. Card. So then there's the PGA school. But if you're not the 120, if you're the 126th golfer, you've had your chance. Right. But there, like, if you're a kid now, if I'm all right, uh, Partain, Miles Partain, can he mm-hmm. get on the Elite 16 and beat everybody there? Uh, why no, not? No. I, why not? So uh, do you guys have the best beach volleyball players at these events or not? Like, well, also, they mm-hmm. set up the system this year to where you have one bad event or one good event and you got people who shouldn't be in the top 16 or 10 or whatever. We're now in it because they had one good event, and, and like the people who were like uh, Brill and Losiak had what they got sick once and had a bad event, and now they're like twenty. Yeah. They've won three tournaments this year. They, they're mm-hmm. the best team this season, and they're probably ranked twenty sixth in the world. And you something. wonder why nobody is coming. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you, please, somebody Our else. Somebody explain like, to me how that works. Uh, let's have the NBA, but we're not going to have all the good teams. Just maybe some. And, uh, it's right. As I said before, name me a sport where I can't go win the championship th- next year. There well, isn't. That's one. what kills me too. Who wins the AVP tour? You don't. It just ends. Like why? Why aren't we all like playing up to a championship? Is, shouldn't there be a winner at the end? Well, Phoenix. That is what they're doing with Phoenix this year. What is it? They added a championship. It's top, no, 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 no. Top eight teams. No, it's the top eight teams from your best two out of three gold series. That's how you qualify. That's how you qualify okay. for it. And it's not a championship. You're not the tour champion. If, like, I think the points total for the whole year should be a tour champion. Yeah. And the tour champions should win something, not get an Instagram message later saying, our team of the year is right. this team. And that's it. You get the Instagram. Like, I've gotten the award. It, I was like, this is it? Like, <laughs> just... All right, so, like right, so here, post? all you guys well, like listening fans like that, right? They like that. You're playing you for have something. to communicate to the fans. All you guys out there, did you hear this? How, how, I don't. I didn't understand that, right? If you're a sport, you must communicate what are your championships, right? So first, exactly. we gather all the greatest athletes, and we tell them which is your. Let's start with one. All right, we got the Olympics. We got what that are we down. playing for? So look at the sports that do this. They they identify. Uh, it's historical has to do with it. Money has to do with it. Size has to do with it. Their biggest championships. Right. If I'm going to watch one beach volleyball match or one beach volleyball event, I'm probably going to watch the Olympics. Yeah. But if I'm I'm going to watch three, which one should I watch? Like the, you, the, you guys have to tell the me and the audience which one. I, look, I watch. 
I have this thing called winners and champions. I don't watch regular season games. I don't watch anything. I watch if it's a championship. Yeah, or a I'm winning, the same way. I will watch. Like I watch. I watch two golf tournaments a year. Right? U.S. Open and Masters. I watch tennis, Wimbledon, U.S. Open. I watch Indy 500. Right? I watch you the Daytona. See them watching, playing I want, under I want, pressure. Yeah, at, at the highest level yeah. that they've identified. Right. Name me on the AVP tour. If I were to tell people the one event that you guys. The players, the tour, the sport is going to designate for now on. Like you got to have a little history mm-hmm. as the one. Manhattan's kind of got that. It's going to yeah. be that. Manhattan's, Manhattan's kind of got question. that. But, but not because the tour. It's because the city decided to put our names on the pier, and that's. I, th- I, th- I really think it, the that's prestige of Manhattan yeah. is because our names are on the pier. It's also been going on since 1960. That for it's sure. the one 100%. they wanted to win. Yeah. Well, there's a lot to it, right? So Stodd on the world tour. It's been going on Stodd's for a long biggie. time. It has prestige. You get the is cowbell. It? Is that is you that the it. one that we should all? Watch? Is that the one you're telling? If you well, got one tournament to watch here, is that the one? That's the one that you guys all are trying. If for. you're an American fan, you watch Manhattan Beach. Yeah. And then if you're an international fan, I mean, I would say World Championships. Whatever World Championships would be. But that's every, every, and that's every, every other year. year. My point so, yeah, is, yeah, I would say I would say Stad. Yeah. I would say Stad, but like this year we decided not to go because we're like over it. Like it just didn't. The prestige in there, the money's not that exciting. <laughs> the points. All right, so let's get this right. The prestige so is the top the, teams the pres- are deciding not to go. So they, just the, because, you, you, therefore, you have not collected the world's greatest athletes exactly. in that sport. It's like you wondering what's going on. There it is. It's a simple game, Travis. Hit it where they're it's not. A simple I game. Hit it where they're totally not. Totally agree. Like, also, well, I need another beer. Yeah, never mind. Is there another beer? I can get you. Travis can go on. Yeah, beer runs. Runs. I'm, I'm so yeah. It's, 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 it just drives <laughs> it's me insane. It's talking exhausting. About volleyball. It's because it's, it's, it's you, exhausting. Talking about stay out of the goo. God, it was. It, 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 I, I, already here. I am. I'm, I've just tra- teleported via Jose's aliens back to the 1990s. <laughs> it's the same. Or the arguments they never end. The, uh, they, it never ends. Seltzer or whatever that was. Um, yeah, no, I think about this all the time. It's kind of nice to hear you kind of validate it, I guess, a little bit in my, or, or just like, yeah, that's good. Uh, we're drinking Kona Brewing Company. Yes, we are. Liquid Aloha. Yeah. I have a big wave golden ale. Please go out and support them and beach volleyball and the beach volleyball tour. Supporting us. And supporting, yeah, support try. And support the book. And support Buy the book. Amazon. Buy the book to three, support we got three our favorite right homeless here. person, Travis. <laughs> Famous homeless beach volleyball player. <laughs> oh. mm. Also, the like we won uh, Florida the last week or whatever, and they gave me the trophy, and I was literally holding it up like with two fingers. It was so small. I was like, should I just, <laughs> should I just put it in my pocket? Because yeah. I, I feel like if I'm mm. holding it, I feel like Shaq mm. holding the water bottle. Like... <laughs> It's just so small. There's no way to make this feel like yeah. really cool. I think winning one AVP in your career is a massive accomplishment for anyone, right? That's like something you have yeah. for the rest of your life. Like, give us, you know, like the Grammys. It's one trophy. It doesn't have to be big, but like the one thing that says that you won one an event. I won AVPs where they didn't give any trophies. <laughs> Somewhere like this week, I got the one the same thing I got for AYSO soccer. Like, can we just have a cheap but like cool little thing where it's like, oh look, here it is. Like people see it on your shelf at home. They're like, there's the AVP trophy. It's but you're getting like, your name on the pier in a month. That is cool. Yeah, but a couple weeks, two weeks. My point. We kind of like lucked into that by whoever did it back in the day. The prestige and the history of it. It's not like a conscious decision that the people running our sport right now made to be like, we're gonna make yeah. put this pier here and it's gonna build this prestige. It just happened to be. They actually did it uh, retroactively. The city council yeah. approved it in, I oh, think, they? in 98. And I think they retroactively uh, put them in. See, that's why Maybe we keep Travis around for those tidbits. Yeah, because those good little, <laughs> yeah, little drop-ins. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Travis. Don't know how to block, but I can tell you some history. It's not that you don't know how to block. You don't know how to block effectively. <laughs> <laughs> You're like Jordan and Shaquille and Sh- Kobe, just, you know. Shaking the head. <laughs> He'll get it though. He'll get it. I'll get I there. even sent him videos of like blockers block. He's like, that's not, I can't do it. I gotta know. No. Can't send me videos of like Oleg. Yeah. <laughs> so right, just up, look at the form. So, so go up to 12 feet <laughs> and then. See what I mean? It's, it's, it's amazing. <laughs> I'm not running the triangle, Kent. 
You're not going to run the... Let's do it. <laughs> I got it. I hear it. Just go over ISO. ISO all the time. Roll in. Uh, sports Center. That's what they all want. Roll in. Just back out. Fade away. The crossover dribble. I understand completely. Go for the long bomb. Bomb. Touchdown. Manziel style. Texas A&M. <laughs> One, uh, I know that Alex had you on for four hours. I don't intend to do that to you. Thank God. That was a so podcast? Four uh, hours? That was, I was training for this one. Okay, okay. gotcha. Yeah. I was training for this So, uh, and I know you've been doing a lot of podcasts. We've had you here for about an hour 15, so I won't mm. keep you here too much longer. Right. But uh, I'm curious what you enjoyed about working, doing this book, and sort of getting back into the weeds of beach volleyball. I think the most exciting thing about it was like just all the memories that came dredging up from my time there and just remembering how excited I was, how much fun I had, how great it was to win. Just the, you know, all, all the players, all the, t- you know, you just don't get that el- elsewhere in life or when you go to business school, you know, f- 40 great guys you know and are friends with all hanging out and competing against each other. Yeah. And we're winning and we're traveling and we're making money. And just, it was, I think we, t- the first time we talked, I think I slipped back in the full 90s, like, you know. We talked for like two hours. F-bomb mode. Yeah. Just throwing out swear words (laughs) like we used to do when we played. (laughs) You can't do it anymore. So that was the best thing. And then I think a couple things were, is when you experience it as a young athlete, first of all, you're not, you can't really necessarily articulate what's going on um, or, or what you're feeling or what you're seeing. You need some time and space to digest what happened so you can communicate it effectively and i with working with you on this book i've realized things and what what happened that i didn't know didn't realize didn't really care to even yeah. contemplate that uh now is like perfect i'm like ah, oh, that's why this ha- that's why this was this like, way like what why the tour went under okay you know what the mistakes they made and their their unwillingness to change course and it was obvious we were going down yeah and why they did it why they did it because they thought they were doing they, they thought it was right they thought they were doing the right thing so um you know why we were so successful I, you, you don't know that you were super you, you don't know that the sport's gonna tank after you're done right. and never revive <laughs> like so like like i said what we did versus what i see what i see happening now is not what we did and i go hmm all right well bfivb did the same thing internationally and it was successful mm, they're not doing that yeah and it's like the thing with the complexity of narrative and communication i didn't know about that. there's been a lot of research in sports marketing and sports business since that time because like i said well you didn't you, like the reason it was a motley crew of anti-authoritarian people yeah. who rose in beach volleyball was because those were the guys who didn't have jobs who were going out of the beach and playing who were mm. just futzing around who did had different career paths than you know maybe a lot of people did and so uh then it just all of a sudden money just flooded in i think we talked about it in the book jordan when he signed the Air Jordan contract, yeah. which, what is that now? It's its own brand, even within Nike. They estimated they'd sell, you know, $3 million, pair, $3 million worth of shoes in three years. And they sold $160 million in the first year. They weren't even close. Okay. You know, Nike sponsors Tiger Woods, and they create a $1 billion golf business. It's number one seller of golf balls just because they slap a swoosh on an athlete, and th- you didn't know that before. They didn't know that yeah. that there was that the, that the brand value of athletes was so tremendous that it would sell your product. That connection, and money flooded in, flooded in. Procter and Gamble, Coca Cola, McDonald's, right. Miller Beer. You know, even Where Budweiser though? started an entire four person tour, four man and four woman tour. Right. They just you know, the, the the volleyball industry is hundreds of millions, and uh, what, the story we told. So we told, like, Fila sponsors Randy Soklos, and they go, we'll give you 10% of sales. All right, whatever. Like, you're making, you're making $50,000, $100,000 on a clothing sponsorship. They sold $6.5 million worth of Randy Stokel's field where he got a check for six hundred fifty grand oh, in one wow. year. Yeah. So that's wow. a lot. Of, six hundred fifty grand. How about that, Beach Volleyball Players of the Day? Speaking of I, I guarantee you, Fila did not imagine they were going to cut him a check for $650,000. Wow. Probably That's happy amazing. to do it though. Sounds yeah. six point five absolutely. million. Absolutely. Both sides. You <laughs> yeah. know that Jordan's um, mom is the one that that made Nike throw in uh, that they had to give him a, a percentage of sales on each shoe that they sold. I didn't know that. She demanded it in the contract because because all the other companies were way bigger than Nike at the time. They're like, if we go with you, you give us a percentage of on each shoe sold. Yeah. 
It's a good move. Mm-hmm. Mama, mm-hmm. Mama made the right call right there. You know, Phil and I went to business school at Stanford University, actually. He mm-hmm. created Nike. And if you all watched The Winning Time, right? Yeah. Remember when he offered, he offered uh, magic? Exactly, yeah. He offered a, a stock in the company. Yes. Which would have been right. worth billions of dollars. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, and he turned it down because he wasn't going to pay him money. And he took the $100,000. This is historical. He took the $100,000 from Converse, which was a lot of money. Right. Because I think his contract was four fifty dollars to play NBA. The Converse is going to pay him hundred grand. He would have made billions of dollars. Well, Phil Knight got smart and he offered Jordan money and percentage of shoes and stock. Yeah. <laughs> he, he learned his lesson because yeah. he didn't get magic. Uh-huh. Yeah. Right. So he learned his lesson with Jordan. And it was a Sinjin. Took a deal with Side Out, and they got he got he owned twenty five percent of the company, and they had an offer for twenty million dollars to sell that thing, and they turned it down. All right, he would have made five million dollars more than all, he made all prize money, all sponsorship. That's the kind of dollars that you're talking about back then. I took stock in a company for four years, and now it's worth zero. Is it, is it the Kona coffee? Kona Red, <laughs> Kona Red, but baby. I have 150,000 shares sitting in there. <laughs> no, it wasn't Phil Knight, but yeah. So, <laughs> oh, <laughs> was he a Stanford Sweet MBA? Story. <laughs> Get a Stanford uh, MBA to run your company. No. <laughs> so, and then, and then there was so again that that helped out a lot that all these companies were pouring money in. I mean, let's shoot. We look. We are we. <laughs> so the the NFL is sports roulette. NFL makes about ten billion dollars, and they get about ten million people watching a football game on a weekend. We were getting four million people watching our telecast on NBC, and we were not getting paid ten billion dollars. Right. So it was a good deal for them too. Yeah. It was a it was a phenomenal deal for them. Phenomenal deal for Miller. Phenomenal deal for our sponsors, and that's kind of flipped now. Like, 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 is it a, is it a phenomenal deal for Bally's uh, or their television? Is it a phenomenal deal for the sponsors? The sponsor, you, you would, yeah, you would see that. You yeah. would see it in the sport happening, and so yeah. Wasn't answer. your question like what I liked about the book? Yeah. So it was was thinking <laughs> about this stuff and 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 just getting all excited again. Yeah, and uh, remembering the good times. Talk by, uh, talking to the guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we had Singed. So uh, for all you don't know. You know, Knucklehead finishes the book. First guy in 22 years. Congratulations, actually. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny is on your article you wrote it's the, it's a journalism technique. Yeah. To like send it to you, yeah. like that's I learned it in journalism school. Well, it's funny it. the way the way you the perception of the journalism major yeah. is like well if you don't if you want to be a part of it this is your chance. As opposed to like send it to them because they probably get hit up a hundred times. Yeah. And they don't believe you're going to actually do it. It would That's, why it yeah. That's why you sent it to. That's why you sent it to him, right? So you know we had we had we had uh, uh, Travis and Delaney and Sinjin and Patty, Patty over, and I was like, all right, let's talk '90s beach volleyball. Yeah. And I got to go. I re-interviewed the Hov. And yeah. Met him in a bar, of course, because he's the Hov. And like, we, first of all, we couldn't we couldn't even talk because everyone was coming up to us. Like, we wanted to tell stories. So that was fun. And talked to Doug Beal. So we talked to I talked to Carl Hinkle, Carlos Brasenio. I talked to Wilk, um, David Wilk, who's the founder, the poodle, the poodle baby, the poodle. <laughs> I don't know to push that. name. The poodle. He was the original he, promoter he, of professional beach volleyball. Uh, Him and this guy Craig Masuoka put on the first tournament. We'll read all about it. Kings of Summer. I am he created. My, is that my copy? Uh, yeah, buddy. Yeah. He created the sport of professional beach volleyball. He did it. He created it. You he could do that back then. It. You could bring him back. Yeah. The poodle. The poodle. Hey, David Wilk, the poodle. You want they want you back. <laughs> Try more and wants the poodle back. <laughs> yeah, it's all about so, the book. Love it. And you know what? So this is what we say in the book too, which is really cool. Um, we knew the truth when we found it, right? Because Travis is a great writer, right? If you're, you want to be involved, you ride somebody to the victory, to the win. <laughs> Get the best part you That's can. Just started the podcast. Saddle that guy up and take him to the win. <laughs> yeah. If you want you want to write a book? You get a writer like Trav. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's a, hey, I can't set either or, or play defense. <laughs> Did well, all right. But we kind of knew the truth. We found right. Like, yep. like I kind of didn't know what was going on, and it, it's all people's perception, how they saw it, what they how they experienced it. So I could be like, Ha, what happened? Don't give me your like. So here's the here's the story. Here's like the bullshit that everyone puts on top of it, and then comes all the name calling, mm-hmm. which it was in the book. We have yep. all the cool name calling. Yeah. <laughs> so if you want to peel back the layer. <laughs> you want to get to the, the get to the core of what was going on. We did that, I think, successfully. Yeah. And it's in the book, and that that was really cool too. That's what I really like. That was something that, except for Sinjin, he wouldn't break. He wouldn't break. Right? Dinner <laughs> was when you were like, "What do you want to do with the book?" And I said that you know I just want to get like sort of the truth of what '90s '80s beach volleyball is all about. What do you, you're like, "What do you mean the truth?" And that's when I realized it wasn't truth but perception. Yes. 
because it was almost interviewing all these players. It was like a Venn diagram. You had Randy's story of what happened here, Sinjin's what happened here, Hobbs somewhere over here, and then Carl Henkel's here. And really what happened was somewhere in the middle. But in the book, we just left all the perspectives in there so the reader yeah. can sort of see that. Because uh, there were guys who remembered matches from tournaments that didn't happen. And yeah. there were people who, and Sinjin remembers this event very clearly where, so Sinjin was playing with Karch. Karch goes off to the national team. Then when Karch did that, Sinjin would play with Randy. And they did this for a couple years. And then Randy said, don't ever do that again. Uh, you're either playing with me or you're playing with Karch. You got to decide. So Sinjin says, I'm playing with you. Karch is national team. So Karch comes back and Sinjin goes, all right, Randy, sorry, I'm playing with Karch. And Randy goes, we had a deal. And Sinjin's like, you're right. Sticking with uh, Randy, sorry, Karch. Well, then Karch asks Randy to play, and Randy says, yeah, absolutely, Karch Karai. He's asking me to play. <laughs> and so then he calls Sinjin and says, hey, I'm playing with Karch. And Sinjin's like, no, 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 we had a deal. And so Sinjin in the book, and I have this quote, I left it in there, and he goes, and Karch never forgave me for that. So I call Karch, <laughs> and I'm like, Sinjin says this happened, this is like a big tense moment, and Karch is like, I don't think I ever asked Randy to play. So Sinjin remembers this epic like breakup with him and Karch, and Karch is like, I don't remember this happening. And so and all this this happened all the time throughout the book. And I was like, what do you do with this? And so what we ended up doing was we left it in there. Just it's all just the different human psychology. Yeah. Like, that's what they say, right? Like like half the stuff that you remember actually didn't happen after ten years or something like that. Yeah. I don't know. I just made that up. But I heard a crazy stat like that. Oh yeah, yeah. That's actually and it was hilarious. It, the reporting for it was so funny. And when you talk to uh, Bersenio and or Williams, yeah. and yeah. they were like, "Oh yeah, Sinjin and Henkel, like we smoked them all the time." <laughs> and then I, <laughs> everyone's like, "That guy sucked." <laughs> I would have won. <laughs> That's always the best. Everyone's like, "Those guys sucked." <laughs> Everyone. And then that guy was like, "Oh, they suck." Yeah. yeah. And then Sinjin was like, "They were never a problem." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so we just left all of it in there. Yeah. yeah. It's beautiful. Mm-hmm. So it's just that right there is just the the ethos of '90s beach volleyball. Just they sucked. They sucked worse. <laughs> that's pretty much what it seems like when we hear from like the yeah. hob and all these guys yelling at us from the strand amazing you guys suck yeah and yeah. all those guys were you. just like so generous with their time i mean i met with hob a couple times he read it a few times i mean you read it hob read hob read wow Twice. that's he's, he's growing yeah <laughs> <laughs> sinjin all those guys it was fantastic just was getting it? to chat with yeah. all of them yeah. loved it loved working with you Thank you. Yeah. And all the, all the good stuff is in there, too. All the controversies, all the fights, all the battles. Like, here's ready? Here's something I learned, too. All right. So in 1992, they're thinking about putting this as a sport in the Olympics. And it's all in the book. It's a great story. But Sinjin goes over to Spain to promote it in front of the IOC. And they, they suspended him. And they fined him, which is retar- I can't say the word anymore. My daughter will get upset. <laughs> it, it rhymes with etarded. <laughs> and... Uh, like you don't you don't suspend and, and find the top players like it's a bad look it's a bad look. I didn't know this at the time because they lied to us I was on the board they, 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 that he was over there trying to get the sport in the Olympics they said oh he went over there because there was more money he you know should have been playing on the tour they they completely lied to us they knew they were lying to us they didn't if they were told us the players of the board hey he's over there trying to get the Olympics you're like high five the guy like go Can yeah. we send more teams like. Go, to go talk to, to Miller. I didn't know that. Yeah. I was there. I was at the meeting. I was on the phone call with the CEO of it's AVP crazy. who lied to me. And because the AVP, ready for this one, the AVP thought they could take on the take on the FIVB. They thought they were the NBA against, you know, international basketball. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was retar- Look, excuse me. Rhymes with etard. Can't, <laughs> can't say it anymore, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Rhymes with etard. <laughs> mm-hmm. But uh, no, we don't want to get canceled. So stuff like that was kind of cool, too. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah. I loved it. Loved the reporting process. Loved writing it. And I loved uh, seeing your excitement, too. When you called oh me, you're God. like, we have a book. I was like, you also have a gold medal, Kent. <laughs> Dude, this is way more exciting <laughs> yeah. right now. It's cool. Yeah, oh my. You should see when I first got First, I ran over to his house to go pick up the copies, and I took pictures, and we all took yeah. pictures of them all. Yeah. Yeah, told everybody. So good. It's, it's fun good. stuff. Yeah. I'm actually super excited now. I mean, I was excited before, but this one, I'm, I feel like this one could catch on. Like, I'm picturing anyone who kind of knew the sport and the names at all, like, they're all going to just be giving you the greatest reviews ever. Yeah, so far the feedback I've gotten has been unanimously, they're like, Because people are so excited to hear about any of your names in any 
kind of book or whatever. Yeah. What is it? What is it about the '90s? Why do we keep getting calls the all the time? It's the like, perception. It it's the perception yeah. of you guys. Yeah, I think it's because people look at it. Like when you sent me that picture it's of the Hermosa feeling you in gave them back then. Yeah. So I, I put that picture on Instagram and I said, "Here's Hermosa in 1990," and people were like, "What? Yeah, that was a beach volleyball tournament. Crazy. Like, oh yeah." And that was ninety. It, just, it was still growing then. It was yeah. It, it was like yeah, <laughs> it's it was gonna, gonna be just bigger, bigger. Yeah, yeah. And then you felt like you had to backtrack the next post. Oh, man. You're like, oh, I didn't mean to like you know downgrade the AVP. Like, are, you, are you like shitting on the AVP now? It's like yes, yeah, I am. I will <laughs> just post it. Uh, I will. They're doing it wrong. And nobody's coming, <laughs> and there could be more money. You want more money, people? Right there. <laughs> 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 Uncle Pete's loving it. Uncle Pete's yeah, over here, guys. Uncle Pete's scene. on the couch over here. He's on camera, just busting up, just hammering Lagunitas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's uh, um, <laughs> doesn't everybody? That's what you learned a bit. Learned a cut shot down the state beach on mission statement. Stanford Business School. <laughs> Yeah, that was not, we didn't have coaches. That's hilarious. You got like assistant coaches and coaches. And vi- yeah, we had no coaches too. We had yeah. to figure it out all on our own because it wasn't. A sport, that means really. we just have more expenses. We make less <laughs> and we spend more. <laughs> but we're just elite professionals, though. But <laughs> right, so I guess I, I guess that makes sense then. That's why everyone calls because it was. God, they used to have to surround us with security, get us mm-hmm. to the courts because there was people be grabbing us and yeah. stopping us. It was. Yeah. The intrigue I, level, I think it's just so. I mean, Delaney summed up. You're the man of mystery, you know. And the what 90s. does that mean, Delaney? <laughs> All right, that's actually the Tracy got a list of questions for you, Travis. Okay, that was one of them. What does she mean by man of mystery? Well, I'm here. I referenced Ask it. any question. Referenced it in in the volleyball mag story that you're one of the few athletes that I've ever heard of who disappeared in his prime. Because not only did you like you were forced to stop playing right at the age of 30, and, and you were in my mind. Still peaking. You were mentioning you're kind of going down a little bit. You won nine of seventeen tournaments in your last season. That was horrible. But then <laughs> nine of seventeen. But then nine not of only did you stop playing, but no one really heard much from you until you started writing this Facebook post during COVID. That's true. And so Delaney was like, "I don't know anything about this guy, and he's one of the greatest of all time." Everyone like Karch is in the media all the time. You know, Sinjin, he's still out there. Randy Haas playing. When I was a kid, 21st. and I don't, I didn't follow volleyball. Much mm-hmm. from Hawaii, I knew the Hawaii guys, but I knew Sinjin, Dodd, Hav, Karch. Like I knew those names, and then when I heard, when I got a little older, I heard your name. I was like, "Oh, he was like good too." And then you look at the resume, you're like, "Wait, he was like the best." What the hell? Who the hell is this guy? <laughs> and then I didn't see you for like until today, <laughs> and so that's probably why you're the mad of mystery. Yeah. No mystery. Uh, Hov goes down the strand every day and just yells at us and tells us how great he is. <laughs> so so he, he's no mystery to us. No, no, You're like no. the opposite. No, there you go. So what questions do you have, people? I'm here. I'm going to go away for 20 years. <laughs> yeah, right. Ask him now. Now's your chance. <laughs> Tell us one, another happy Brazilian story. What do you oh, want? For sure. <laughs> yeah. But Ken, I appreciate you coming on. Man. Absolutely, it's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure being on the podcast, reliving the memories. Good luck to you. Thank You've you, taken sir. the. You're the number one guy. You've, you know, oh. that's uh, that's quite an honor. I want to tell you. Kid took me out when I was the number one guy uh, a few weeks ago. Mimosa. But yes, we did finally get. That you don't win seed. them all. That's the problem. But it's a good accomplishment. You should appreciate be proud. It. You're, you're, you know, there's a long line of great champions, and uh, yeah, you're wearing it well. Appreciate it. And Trav, thank you for writing the book with me. That was really cool, too. It's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure. And all you people out there, I'm here now. I'm here. No more mystery. No more mystery. (laughs) And he your questions. And I I was at the six man. And and I'm in the goo. You're in the goo. I'm in the goo. And if I don't leave soon, I'll be stuck. (laughs) I will say, when I hear that your posts were on Facebook, I'm like, ooh, that's why I missed it. (laughs) (laughs) Tracy's like, yeah, have you seen uh, Travis's Instagram? I'm like, "Uh, yeah, no, I don't do Instagram. (laughs) I'm old. I'm old. Get off my lawn. It was better back in my day. (laughs) You kids. I literally asked Travis that earlier. I was like, is he one of those guys who kind of like, you know, Everything was always better back in his day. He's like, no, 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 no. He's all right. <laughs> Kent, pleasure. Thank you, guys. Thanks for inviting me in. Pleasure. Oh, oh good stuff. Corner brew liquid aloha. Shoots. Shoots.